as David said, I'm going to be talking about where I see psychology in 2040, which is more accurately reflecting the world we live in. So to start off, I think to look forward 20 years, we first need to look back 20 years. And that's essentially looking back on my lifetime. Uh, when I was born, my parents didn't have a computer at home. Neither of them had a mobile phone. They didn't have access to the internet. And to send my grandparents a picture of me in Australia took nearly a dozen steps, which of course we can now do in mere seconds. I expect the next 20 years to see advances in, in technology at a similar rate to the last. And this in turn will have a massive impact on psychology. I believe the use of artificial intelligence in the field is going to be one of the most noticeable changes. We're already beginning to see AI as the subject in research across several disciplines and approaches. And I think as our knowledge and experience with it grows, so will our confidence. And we'll move from not only using it as a subject within our investigations, but as a tool for investigating and carrying out research. I think this is similar for virtual reality. Um, they're going to become experiences with virtual reality are going to become more common and the ability within VR to create bespoke environments and give control of variables at unprecedented levels is going to allow researchers and practitioners alike opportunities that even now are impossible to comprehend. I also think it's going to allow us to investigate areas that currently are inaccessible to everyone or certain communities. Finally is the rise in virtual and remote counselling. Already over the course of the pandemic, I think we've really seen a spurt in people taking up these services. I've definitely seen a lot of people talking about their use of them and how effective they found them to be. I think over the next 20 years, we're gonna focus on this and develop and shape them even more to be as effective, accessible, flexible and affordable as they can possibly be. This should hopefully allow people who don't currently feel that the options are suitable to them or can't currently access them to have the support they need in a way that suits them. Of course, another key development over the last 20 years has been the rise of social media platforms. If they're still around in 2040, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram will all be celebrating 30 or more years on the internet. And even if they no longer exist, it's likely that other platforms will have come in and taken their place. I personally don't see a future without social media. And by 2040, there will be a massive number of people who have never known the world without it. We're already seeing the effects social media can have on both mental and physical health. But in 20 years time, I think we'll be focusing specifically on adults who have grown up alongside these platforms and whether they've become more resilient to its effects, more aware of its influences, or if the impacts of social media can build up over time and result in more extreme cases. Additionally, I think interventions for mental health issues related to social media, such as body image issues, eating disorders and self-harm, will need to become even more accessible as the number seeking help and support increases. Of course, it can't all be negative. Already we're seeing how social media can bring positive change to people's lives. Over the course of the last few weeks in particular, I've noticed how it can create a real sense of community and belonging and how knowledge and education can be spread quickly and affordable, like free. <laughs> Um, because of this, I think by 2040, we will have created specific and effective ways of using social media to tackle depression, combat loneliness and spread general positivity. So as I've already touched upon, I think accessibility is going to be a key focus for the next 20 years. We're going to be making what already exists and what we develop as accessible as possible so that they're available to everyone, regardless of wealth, age, geographical location, ability, race and any other factor. Resources providing information, education and support will be made available in more forms than ever before. 
this is going to allow them to be not only accessed but spread by everyone. Access to effective therapies, interventions and treatments is also going to be improved and providing more options in terms of how they can be carried out, who can carry them out, where they can be carried out and in general how they're administered. Individuals I think by 2040 will always be given an option on treatment and able to select what they think is most suited to them. I think it's also important that routes into psychology become even more accessible at every level. Psychology is relevant to every person therefore I believe it should be accessible to every person no matter what stage of life they're at, where they come from, any other factor. Lastly, I believe a focus on diversity and driven by an anger at the lack thereof in the bulk of classic research, combined with increased collaboration across disciplines, approaches and countries, will have driven the foundations of the field to where they ought to be. Increased collaboration at every level will result in a larger variety of what is on offer for everyone in psychology, whether that be those creating and investigating or those accessing and engaging. We'll be truly acknowledging that this isn't a one size fits all kind of discipline. Increasing diversity and acknowledging where we have previously got it wrong in theory, research, practice and education is incredibly important. By 2040, we'll be more accurately reflecting the world we live in, encompassing all people, all communities and all cultures. In conclusion, I think by 2040, psychology as a field will be nearly unrecognisable. How we study things will have changed, as will what we're studying. What we make available and offer needs to change with us and our ideals and become more inclusive, accessible and diverse. And though these are massive changes, even if they're really good, they can be quite daunting to think about. But I think the motivations behind why everyone is here of understanding behaviour, improving lives and supporting each other is going to remain steady at the heart of every person involved, even if how we're doing it is nearly impossible to conceive right now. Thank you for listening. I'll clap on everyone's behalf. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sure. 479 people are all clapping now so I, I'm clapping on their behalf that was fantastic Alice and it's really really nice to see you you give that sort of broad um, perspective on um, the future and particularly uh, technology and I think what you've kind of illustrated is that these kind of technological advances that we don't sometimes think of as um, you know the realm of psychology actually to for us to really get the full benefit and to ensure that they that they are um, the benefits are distributed uh, equally. We really need to think about that interface between people and the technology. Um, and I think you illustrated that that really well. My my own son, actually, my oldest son, has just graduated from a degree in engineering, and he's going into sort of um, um, t a data science type type stuff. And he's uh, and, and he was sort of thinking he'd get away completely from psychology, but he's having to to come up to find that he has to deal with that interface. So I think you drew that out really well. And I was really pleased to um, see that you touched on that accessibility thing because I think we've seen that within COVID, haven't we? That um, the, there are these amazing sort of um, possibilities that you touched on around education and, and access and communication but but you know they do rely on certain uh, you know sort of you know things like a wi-fi connection the type of sort of uh, hardware that you have and so it's really i was really pleased that and also obviously being able to manage sensory disabilities and things that so i was really pleased to see that you you highlighted that and that's something that we picked up within the covid work on you know that that sort of um access internet access as a, as a sort of you know uh, right really um to 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 sort of minimize these inequalities um so uh, i don't know if there's any uh, oh um there's well, there's one comment that says well done alice from stephanie bennett and i'm sure she's speaking on behalf of 483 people it's uh, 
Um, my colleague uh, Moena, I'll just give her a quick shout out because she's joined us from uh, New Zealand. She, I just saw that she's logged on from New Zealand, so she caught your uh, talk as well. Um, I don't know. It, it, do, I mean, you, you mentioned your. Um, well, I mentioned that your your plan is to. Um, in your final year project to look at um, activism, social activism and technology. I don't know if you want to just, um, we've got a couple of minutes, want to say anything about that? What, what interested you in that area? Um, so obviously we've been seeing a lot of movements occurring over the course of pandemic and over the past few years. So they've really shaped my university experience. Um, particularly interested in it as one of the leaders of the Black Lives Matter movement in this country who has been organizing the peaceful protests in London is one of my friends from school. Right. So it's really fascinated me to see what she's been doing and I was particularly interested in seeing how many people have been engaging with that digitally. Obviously we've been doing a lot of things digitally, this conference for one, and I'm curious to see what motivates people to join in digitally as instead of physically or and then hopefully go on to see how they work together. Fantastic well I'm sure we're all looking forward to seeing the output of your research and your career as it develops I'm sure you've got a, an interesting career in, in terms of your own career and also I'm sure psychology is going to be an interesting place to, to work and particularly the, the field that you're you're planning to work in so thanks so much for giving that um, talk for entering the competition and for giving that talk it, I realize it must be a bit daunting to sort of come on here so but I think you've done a fantastic job so well well done and uh, another round me. of applause. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Alice.